you don't have to have a huge engagement whereby you know people are getting bank loans and borrowing because they want to compete with the who's who in order to show the world that we've had a very big engagement no those that waste wealth they are void of barakah they are void of blessings what is an engagement in islam at the point where both the boy and the girl are happy the parents announce that inshallah we have now set a date of nikah don't let that date be 2 years from now because in those 2 years shaitan will come and spoil the sowing of the seed in a halal way by making it be sown in a haram way i know of cases of people who are engaged to be married and they say no we are only going to marry after we graduate that's in about 4 years time and within the 4 years she is already expecting a child it's happening because why the parents were foolish my beloved parents people say i wait for my son to become or to have a job and i wait for my daughter to be able to earn etc then you can get married that might not happen allah has already given you some wealth you need to use that wealth to help your children why not i will help you i will facilitate it for you it doesn't mean because the nikah is now done we have to shift into the house today tomorrow no the nikah can be done my brothers and sisters and maybe if it was done early we may agree mutually that they can still live within their own homes they can meet up every weekend what's wrong they can go for an umrah trip what's wrong they are married but they may not be able to afford their own accommodation right now what did we do we protected them from haram what i'm saying may sound do you know foreign to you but wallahi it's a fact it's a reality the nikah is done there's nothing in islam that says once it is done you have to get out of my house and go into your husband's house no when he's ready we will go please help me i will stay here for now he can come and go subhanallah i can go and come at least i'm married what have you protected her from from haram that's what it is but with us we want to compete with the world wallahi i know of cases in nigeria i know of cases in nigeria and elsewhere elsewhere as well where people are delaying the weddings of their daughters because they feel it's going to cost a lot of money and we don't have that money right now to be able to give them a huge wedding it's happening even in the indo pak subcontinent and elsewhere on the globe in asia as well they delay because why what am i going to do i've got so many daughters i need to get them married and it's going to be very costly guess what you have to get them married in accordance with your means that's it don't ever go around begging and borrowing borrowing whether it's from a bank or from a friend no you don't do that simple the nikah can be done in the masjid what does it cost you the walima can be made up of a plate of sweets it's also called a walima nothing wrong you can make 200 plates of sweets and distribute it in the masjid and that's your walima that's what you could afford and if you want you can sacrifice an animal because that is a sunnah invite 20 of your friends a few family members and that's it what is wrong the problem is when we want to invite the whole ummah subhanallah as a show then it becomes a difficulty problem you want to make a show out of it some allah has blessed them with wealth you can invite anyone you want you know people say is there a limit to the number of people i can invite if allah has given me money the answer is no you can invite 10000 people to the wedding of your daughter there is no harm it's not called a waste a waste is when you have extravagantly lavishly thrown money for nothing you spent 5000 dollars only on candles you spent another 10000 dollars on the decoration you spent another 50000 dollars on the dancers who were going to come to dance and show their bodies and you find the groom looking at the body of the dancer oh i don't know should i have actually chosen her or that one day you paid for trouble that's what you did may allah forgive us you paid for trouble may allah forgive us so we need to know that when marriages are done it's the baraka the baraka you are looking and searching for the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala try and keep it simple you might have invited 10000 people but you fed them with 
decent food, you made and you remembered the poor. Because those weddings where the poor are forgotten and only the wealthy are invited, what happens to the blessings and the barakah? You lose it. Remember to invite the poor as well to the wedding. Remember to give them part of what goodness Allah has blessed you with. In order that they will make dua, they will be happy, they will come. Barakallahu lakuma, wa baraka alaykuma, wa jama'a baynakuma fi khair. And they have really eaten. Sometimes the wealthy, they will come, they'll touch a piece of salad maybe, eat it. One olive there, a glass of water, gone. And they will disappear and they will say, they will go back. It can happen sometimes and they will say, ah, the food was not so good. Not so good. Whereas the poor who have come, they will come, they will eat, they will be thankful and they will never say the food was not good. They will say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillahilladhi at'amani wa saqani wa ja'alani minal muslimin. 